about the arrest that is going on to students, and we shouldn't be doing that. We should be giving them education and not incarcerating them. The arrest that is happening is mostly to males and to Hispanics and blacks, which is stereotyping, and mostly in the Bronx. I think that what they're doing is wrong, and they should just give them the education they need instead of putting them in jail. So that's why we're here today for Youth on the Move. We're here because of the arrest that's being done. And it's just, it's a fair that people are doing that, so we're going against them. We're here for the arrests that's going on in the Bronx. I think it's not fair. I think um, police are arresting students for little things. They should give them detention for leaving school early, not um, getting them arrested for small things. There's other, th there's other ways to solve the problem than getting arrested. You're just taking away the education. Mira, mi nombre es Luis Figueroa y estoy aquí representando mi comunidad y a mi sindicato que es el UBJ. Yo soy empleado en las escuelas, yo limpio las escuelas y soy menor de la comunidad. Y estoy aquí para dar mi respaldo, a mi apoyo a los estudiantes que están aquí para decirle a la ciudad, al departamento de, de educación y del, del departamento de policía que estos arrestos de los estudiantes uh, debe de parar hoy y uh, usar estos fondos para la educación donde se debe de, de mantener. Buenas tardes, yo soy una miembro de casa, mi nombre es Grace Torres, entonces estamos aquí para participar en apoyar a los estudiantes que están siendo abusados abusado por la policía porque lo que está pasando es que como no hay suficiente seguridad en la escuela, pues ahora están cruzando las líneas llamando a los policías para que se encarguen de asuntos que deben de ser escolares, no de, de la ciudad. Entonces estos policías vienen y si sabe la historia de estos estudiantes lo están abusando y están este, usando tácticas brutales contra estos estudiantes y formándole cargo y récord que no deben de ser porque eso le daña su futuro. 93.5% of black and Latino students are being receiving summonses and arrests for all different types of petty nonsense and suspension rate. There's 532 suspensions in between the months of December, so September to December alone, and 379 arrests of our students, black and Latino students. And enough is enough. We want to change and we want it now. I'm Stephanie Colon and I'm with you on the move. And good afternoon to all parents, students, teachers, lawyers, advocates, elected officials, and the media. Thank you all for coming out to today's press conference. We're here today to shed light on the disturbing data that was released um, through the Student Safety Act. The data shows the highest number of students being arrested and given summonses are right here in the Bronx. Why are our students being arrested and not educated is the question. We are here to demand action from the Department of Education, and we want our Bronx students to be treated with respect and dignity. Our first speaker this afternoon is an 18 year old senior from Morris campus. His name is Frank Rivers, and he is a member of Sisters and Brothers United. Let's give it up for Frank Rivers. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Frank Rivers. I am 18, a student on the Morris campus. I am a leader in the Sisters and Brothers United, and I am here in the Dignity Hill School campaign. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Dignity Hill School's campaign is a coalition of students, parents, and advocates in New York City, fighting against the push out of that New York City students. We know that low-income students of color are being criminalized by being suspected suspended and arrested in our classrooms. We at the Dignity Hill Schools campaign believe that suspension should be, they should be decreased by 50% by 2013, that discipline should be handled to school staff and not NYU PD cops. My name is Michelle Reyes and I'm the parent leader at New Settlement Parent Action Committee here in the Bronx, South Bronx. I am here today to address the state of safety of our public schools. I was shocked to learn that in less than three months of schools, there were 532 summonses and 279 arrests of New York City public school students. Of the nearly 300 arrests that were made, 93.5% were of black and Latino students. Bronx students make, made up 
45.1% of that number. The Bronx is also the highest number of school-based arrests. What's wrong with this picture? As a parent of a seventh grade Bronx middle school student, I am deeply concerned. About 20% of the arrests made between October to December evolved youth between the ages of 11 to 14. That hits close to home. Suspensions and arrests are part of a larger vicious cycle where our children are being pushed out at alarming rates for the, from the very schools where they are supposed to be receiving education. These methods fail to get to the root of the problems our students are fa facing. What we, want, what we need are real positive discipline interventions to help our students become successful in school and in life. Are the arrests and summonses justified? When we see that 63% of the summonses are for disorderly conduct. What does disorderly conduct really mean? Is it talking back? Singing in halls? Do students have to go to court to face a judge for this? Students are being scared. They're being terrorized. That's not the education we want for our students. There are more police personnel working in our schools than guidance counselors. The Department of Education needs to shift its priorities and place more guidance counselors in schools and less police officers. Let me say that again. The Department of Education must shift its priorities and place more guidance counselors in school and less police officers. As a parent, the Parent Action Committee, as part of Dignity in Schools campaign, stand here today with students, teachers, lawyers, advocates, and elected to demand education, not incarceration. Where are the resources and preventive measures that allow room for students to learn from their mistakes and change behaviors without winding up in handcuffs? We want students to receive social and emotional support from guidance counselors and teachers. What would it mean for students to take ownership over their school community and provide support to one another in peer mentorships? We cannot afford to watch our children go to school only to end up in jail. The time is now to demand that our Bronx youth get quality education in safe schools that are about dignity, respect, and growth. Because these numbers are unacceptable. That's right, Michelle. What we need is our children's social and emotional needs addressed. It. And we cannot do this with more police officers in schools. We need more social workers and guidance counselors. Furthermore, we need our school safety officers to be properly trained and to treat our, our students with respect. Excuse me. Our next speaker is a strong supporter of a safety school of a safety school of safety schools and dignity for all students. She is a strong she has a strong record of working with the youth and improving educational opportunities in the Bronx. Let's give a warm welcome to the 77th District Assemblywoman Vanessa Gibson. This is the crossroads for our young people. And I am so delighted that we have so many young people here because this is about your future. This is about your safety. And this is about making sure that we as advocates and leaders and electeds and clergy members do all that is possible for your future. This is a time in our society, in our city, when we are facing the shocking reality that raises serious questions about our education in the city of New York. It seems as if these growing statistics are more of an extension of our criminal justice system with textbooks being replaced with handcuffs. Let me say that again. Textbooks being replaced with handcuffs. These growing numbers and these statistics that are being used to define our young people are shameful at best. This is not the time when we need to arrest our young people and send them to the local precinct. We cannot allow our young people to be sent upstate to the criminal justice system. 
We are here because we are united as Bronx residents, as advocates, and as concerned individuals because we care about all of you young people. We understand, we sympathize, and we know the struggles that you are going through. We are united because we must help you. These alarming statistics, are we are facing a very bad reality because we realize that something is wrong in our system. Something is wrong in the educational system where there are more African American and Latino young men and women who are arrested in our communities and in our school. We have schools right now in our borough that have metal detectors making it a criminal justice environment instead of an educational environment. That, ladies and gentlemen, is wrong. And that is unacceptable. So I am here as your legislator, as your friend, as your advocate to say that we are demanding changes in our system. I know many of you have been very active at City Hall and in the state capitol, and I want to encourage you to continue to do that. Do you remember a few years ago when the state proposed cutting the Metro cards, right? We need that same energy as if we are losing our children right now. We need young people to continue to stand with us because the forces out there will have you believe that our young people belong in jail. And we know that is not true. Our young people are talented. They have great potential. They can sing, they can dance. They are talented and they are intelligent. But what are we doing to maximize on those talents? We are asking the Department of Education to come to the table and implement alternative measures that keep our young people engaged. Instead of sending them to the local precinct, implement counseling and more guidance counselors and social workers in our school that can deal with the hearts of our challenges. Throwing our young people in jail is not the answer. That does not solve the problem and that does not address many of the challenges that we face. We are young people, we are students, and we are demanding a greater accountability from the Department of Education. We must remain firm and we, we must remain united on the principles that we believe in. And those principles are that every child, every young person in our city deserves access to quality education, to a safe environment. That is what we have to advocate for. So young people, we need to stay united. We are working together on your behalf, but we need your help. We need you to continue to advocate for yourself and for other young people teenagers and young students in our community. It's really disturbing that when you look at the entire city of New York, the Bronx always tends to be the highest, right? The Bronx is always last in everything that's good. We have to turn those statistics around and make them into success stories because our young people are success stories. So I thank you for being here. Your presence today speaks volumes to the work ahead. Thank you for being with us. Thank you to the parents for doing a great job in educating your young people and being involved in their education. We cannot do this without our parents. Let us not forget the role that parents play in their children's education. Beyond three o'clock, the fact that our young people continue to learn, we must remember the values that we stand upon. So I thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. The fight is never over. It is never over. We stand with you. We stand with you to make sure that we get equal justice for our young people and we take away those handcuffs and we replace them with textbooks. So thank you so much. The struggle continues. No handcuffs, more textbooks. 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 Our next speaker is State Senator Gustavo Rivera. Senator Rivera has been actively involved in issues of public safety and criminal justice as the ranking member of the Crime Victims, Crime and Corrections Committee. Please welcome Senator Rivera. Good afternoon all. The first thing I want to do is I want to thank the City Council because the City Council passed a law that made us get this information. We didn't have this data before. We would not be standing here if we didn't know that this was happening. And think about some of those numbers. 
93% of these arrests are black and Latino students. We are not 93% of the population in the schools. So there's a problem with that. 45% of those arrested, the summonses happened here in the Bronx. The Bronx is not 45% of the city. Those two issues are key. And one more issue I wanna talk about, one. That is the days of training that school safety officers get before they are put on the schools to police our children, one day. That is not acceptable. School safety officers should be there to protect the students. They should not be there to make them feel like they are in prison. It is that simple. And what we're, trying to, we're talking about today is that it starts today. This campaign to bring attention to this issue and to make it stop starts today. Isn't that great to see our elected officials come to support our students? We need more Bronx elected officials like Assemblywoman Gibson, like Ms. Royo, like, Ms. like Senator Rivera to step up and shed some light. Um, sorry, to shed some light on policies that negatively affect our youth. I'm gonna introduce uh, Carmen Arroyo to come up and say a few words. Assemblywoman Carmen Arroyo. And I'm very happy to be here, but I am not going to repeat what my colleagues just said, because they are right, right to the point. But I wanna say something to the people that are coordinating this movement, my congratulations. It's about time that you come out, that we stick together to work for our youth, to work for our children. But let me make a comment here. I have years of experience in education and it's one of my priorities in Albany. We have to make the system the system of the city of New York that has so much liberty to work with the budget that in the same way that every month they are planning to close the schools and they close the schools because the school is not failing, the children is not failing, the system is failing. And what we have to understand that in the situation when a child has to be arrested in the inside one school, who is failing? The child? No, the system is failing. There is no need to arrest a minor in the premises that the minor is supposed to be protected. In the premises where we as legislators assign money in billions every year to pay staff and to pay the people that is supposed to be there taking care of that child. And if there is a behavior that has to be questioned, there are parents at home and there are people that can help that child to come down to the behavior that is accepted in the classroom and that child should never be arrested. Let me tell you what happened when a person is arrested, especially a child. There is a record made for that child, for that individual. There is a record that that child is going to carry for the rest of his life. And who is responsible here? The system is the one that is responsible. Déjenme decirle en español, en la lengua que muchos de ustedes entienden. Esto es abusivo, no debe de suceder. Desde el fondo de mi corazón estoy con los padres. Yo conozco el sistema y sé de los millones y millones de dólares que nosotros en la Asamblea del Estado de Nueva York y en el Senado alocamos a la ciudad de Nueva York todos los años para que eduquen y preparen a nuestros niños para el futuro. Pero todo está sucediendo menos eso. Tenemos que estar más unidos, tenemos que estar más conscientes 
de qué es lo que le conviene a esa juventud que va creciendo, por los cuales tenemos una obligación. Esto es abusivo, esto no se puede aceptar, no tenemos que culpar a los policías que patrullan la escuela, ellos están allí para seguir instrucciones. A lo que hay que culpar es al sistema y a los individuos que el sistema le está pagando salario. Miren, oigan, y bueno, chavos, para que eduquen y protejan a nuestros niños. Que Dios los bendiga. Vamos adelante, estoy con ustedes y todo lo que yo pueda hacer, estoy a sus órdenes. Let's give a warm welcome to Wilfredo Pagan, representative from Bronxboro President's Office. I would like to add, as a father and a parent myself of New York City Public School students, at the bottom line is this, that education is everything. And when you look at the children, you have to look at the, at, at the fact that an ability is nothing without an opportunity. And every time we betray them, and we take away that opportunity from them, by doing the things that we're doing, we, get, we stop them from being the next professional in life. So it is my hope and expectation that this continues to grow. You have my personal support myself as well, as a parent. James Fairbanks, um, in representation for Helen Foster, Diane Foster's office. Good evening. Good evening. Young people, you have a right and a duty to stand on a sidewalk and to protest and demonstrate and stand up for your rights. We're here asking our city elected officials to hold an oversight hearing on how school-based arrests are being made and why are there disparities when it comes to which communities are most impacted by school-based school arrests. For our state elected officials, we're asking for an endorsement of the anti-handcuffing anti bill introduced by Kim Kamara. Kareem Kamara, and the sister bill introduced by Kathleen Nolan. Furthermore, we want more resources to be put towards positive discipline pro programs into our schools. Many of the organizations that are here with us today are part of the Dignity in Schools campaign, which is a national organization of students, parents, advocates, educators, and lawyers working to improve discipline in schools and create safe, positive, and dignified environments for young people to learn. It is our pleasure to introduce Andy Arts, who is an attorney at Legal Services New York City Bronx and a member of the Dignity in Schools campaign. He represents families in educa education cases, especially long-term suspensions and special education cases. Please give a warm welcome to Andy Arts. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, I'd like to say thank you especially to all the elected officials here from the City Council, the State Senate, and the State Assembly. And in addition to the people who spoke, I'd like to recognize Dustin Engelkin, who's here from City Council Member Annabelle Palma's office. Dustin, we're thankful for your support and for the City Council Member support. We know that Council Member Palma is behind us on this. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, I'm an attorney with Legal Services NYC Bronx. And in the education unit, I represent families in long-term suspension cases. A lot of my students who are facing suspension have also been arrested in school for these same incidents. Now these are not criminals. These are not criminals intent on committing crimes in schools. These are children and young people who are still learning the right way, the appropriate way to respond to conflict. Some of my clients have included a seventh grade girl who was uh, arrested for assault after she got into a fight with another student who had teased her for being fat. Another of my clients, a ninth grade girl in special education, who got upset when a school safety officer put his hands on her and tried to take her to the office. Another of my clients, an eighth grade boy who brought a knife to school because he was scared about being jumped. Now, fighting in school is not okay. Bringing a knife to school is not okay. But arresting these students for these infractions is not the right solution. Now the number, the number of arrests and summonses in our schools uh, is, is scary. The, the 279 arrests and 532 criminal court summonses over just 55 school days in October, November, and December. But the scariest part is that these numbers may only be a fraction of the arrests and the summonses that are actually taking place in our schools. 
Many of my clients who have been arrested come to my office and tell me that it was not a school safety officer who arrested them, but a New York City police officer who was called in by the school to make these arrests. So these numbers that we're seeing from this data may only be a small portion of the arrests which are happening in our schools. These arrests represent the school to prison pipeline in action. Students who are arrested, students who are suspended, are much more likely to drop out of school or end up in the criminal justice system when they're adults. Instead of arrests and suspensions, New York City needs a system which establishes community-based, restorative approaches to discipline. Some schools around the city are using these restorative approaches and they're working. Lynn Paul is the director of special projects of Mass Transit Street Theater and a video and a video and peer mediator and mediation trainer now helping to coordinate a model transformative justice program in the four schools at Morris High School campus. Let's welcome Lynn Powell to learn about some positive alternatives that can be used. So a lot of us think that uh, NYPD trained police officers and metal detectors are necessary to keep our schools safe, to keep teachers and students safe. Are you one of those people who thinks that's necessary? No! But we're really used to it, aren't we? Yeah. And I'm here today to offer proof there is another way to have safe schools and treat young people with respect they deserve. The New York Civil Liberties Union and Annenberg Foundation have published a book detailing how five large New York City high school campuses have proved another way is possible. It's called Safety with Dignity. You can get a copy for yourself. <clears throat> Alternatives to over-policing our schools. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido.